Hey everyone, today in the Plastic Canvas I'm going to show you how to make your armour look damaged and tarnished. Hey everyone, Matt here from the Plastic Canvas and welcome to today's painting video. And like I said in the intro today, I'm going to show you how to make your armour pieces look damaged and tarnished. And to do that, I'm going to use Brog here from Gatefall. So when I was painting Brog, the overall look that I was trying to go for is that this is a battle-hardened warrior that's taken part in countless fights. And where other warriors may like to wear clean and pristine armour, Brog likes to hang on to his old, damaged and tarnished armour almost as like a trophy of all of the victories that he's managed to have. So all of those scratch and chip marks that are all throughout his armour shows how many enemies he's been able to slay. So the look that we're going to be going for today with the armor is that once upon a time it was brand new, it was clean and pristine, but through all of the battles that it's been through, it's become tarnished, it's lost its shine, and it's taken a ton of damage along the way. But it's still just as tough as the day that it was forged. So in this video, I'm going to show you two different ways of creating damaged and tarnished armor. So the armor on Brog's legs here is going to be focused more on just being damaged and chipped and scratched, whereas the armor that's more up on his arms is going to be more rusty and just looking more aged. So the main key thing with the damaged armor on his legs here is that all of the chips and scratch marks really, really stand out against the rest of the armor. So we need to start off with a really, really dull down metallic base coat so that then as we start to mix in more of the brighter metallics, they're able to really, really contrast against that dull down base coat. So just to base coat these armor pieces, I started with Gunmetal, which is my Vallejo Silver Metallic. I mixed into that a dark blue and then some black as well, and just base coated all of the different armor pieces with that. And then because that has that Gunmetal in there, it has a bit of shininess to it. But I wanted to get rid of that for the base coat. So then I threw the black wash over the top just to dull it all down so that our base coat starts nice and flat, but still looks metallic. So now that that wash is dried and everything's really dulled down, we're going to start to paint in some scratch and chip marks, which is going to add a bit of texture and make the armor pieces look beaten and no longer smooth. So to do this, I've just taken that same gun metal and dark blue that I used for the base coat, but I've left out the black that went into that base coat. So now we're painting with an overall lighter color, but with probably more gun metal into this mixture than what there was in that original base coat color. So this is now much, much shinier, but then also a lighter color. So as I'm putting this layer down, there's two different things that I'm doing. One is that I'm painting scratch marks like what I'm doing here. So I'm mostly sort of starting around the edge and just painting lines kind of in different directions just to make it look like swords and axes and different weapons like that have struck the armor pieces. But then the other thing that I'm also trying to do is make all of the edges look beaten and uneven. So to do that, I'm painting along the edge, but kind of bouncing the brush a little bit for lack of a better term. So I'm kind of edge highlighting, I guess, but I'm trying to get an inconsistent edge highlight by bouncing the brush. And the overall impression that this gives is that the edge has been roughened up because some parts of it have got chip marks on it and some parts don't. And now for the last layer of these leg pieces, I'm going to be painting in the exact same way that I did with the last layer, except that I'm only using straight gunmetal. There's no blue mixed into this at all. So I'm going to be concentrating this gunmetal on the edges and painting the scratch and chip marks, but I'm going to be reducing the amount of overall surface area that I'm going to be covering so that by the time I'm done with this third layer, there will be three layers of paint showing through. So there'll be the original dulled down base coat. Then there'll be the second coat, which was the first layer of the scratch and chip marks where there was a little bit of blue mixed in so that the overall steel color wasn't too bright and shiny. 
And then there's this third layer, which really stands out and has a lot of contrast between it and that original base coat color that'll really emphasize these scratch and chip marks and give the overall impression that this armor is really beaten and has taken a heap of damage. So as I'm putting this straight gun metal down, you can see that I'm just putting it down in the exact same places as I did the last layer, concentrating on those edges, and then kind of going back over the same scratch and chip marks, but just making sure that I leave some of them showing through, just so that there's different degrees of damage that are showing through. Because having these different degrees of damage and also that dulled down original base coat layer just really adds to the overall texture and the roughness of these armor pieces because like I said back near the start the overall impression that I wanted to give here with Brog is that he is a warrior that's been through a ton of battles and wears his damaged armor with pride because it shows how many enemies he's being able to defend and slay. Alright, so there's our first set of armor complete, and I think that is a really, really effective way, without going too over the top in terms of difficulty, to create a damaged armor look. And when Brog is in the middle of the table being seen from that distance, all of those chips and scratch marks really, really stand out because of that contrast that we created between that dulled down original base coat and then the final layer of the scratch and chip marks which is done with just the straight gunmetal, and I think that looks really, really cool. So now with this second set of armor, I'm going to show you a different way of creating a damaged and tarnished metal look, and that's through more corrosion rather than physical damage, because I didn't want all of Brog's armor to look exactly the same. I wanted the armor that was around his legs to look more like it had copped a heap of sword and axe damage, but that his armor that he's wearing on his arms and shoulders has just been with him for so long that it started to corrode. So I base coated this with a mixture of gunmetal and beastie brown. So I've used the gunmetal because it has the metallic in it, but then the beastie brown is kind of a mid-tone brown so that as I put these washes over the top, it doesn't go too dark, but it has a little bit of orange in it. So it's kind of already got that rusty sort of tint to it. And then like with the leg armor, I also mix some black in there just to keep this original base coat nice and dark. And so now I'm putting a black and brown wash over the top. I didn't mix the black and brown wash because I didn't want the whole surface to be the exact same color. So I put the black wash down in some parts, the brown wash in other parts, and then just kind of wet blended them together just to get a little bit of tonal variety. And so now from here, we're just following through the exact same process as what I did with the leg armor. So now the first layer of this kind of highlighting, if you want to call it that, or just creating the damaged look, is by mixing the gunmetal and beastie brown with no black, and then concentrating it on the edges as well as mainly the flat surfaces. And you'll see that I'm doing a lot of kind of stippling, I guess. So I'm not trying to paint it smoothly. I'm really trying to paint it on inconsistently just to really rough up the overall look of the surface. So you can see there as I'm going around that edge there of that bit of armor that I am doing that stippling, bouncing kind of motion. That's just so that no edge or surface looks too smooth as parts of that base coat color that were dulled down by the washers is inconsistently allowed to show through. And now just like with the leg armor pieces, we're going to finish the roughening up of it with the straight gun metal. So again, just following the same areas that I did with the previous layer. So those edges and flat surfaces, but just reducing the amount of surface area that I cover so that we have those three layers coming through. So there's the original dull down base coat. Then that second layer that had the gunmetal and the brown steel mixed together. And then just this final gunmetal layer. And these three layers all being able to show through together really adds to that overall roughened look. And that this armor has taken a beating over time.
Now with that final layer done, you could absolutely leave it there. I think that look is really, really cool, but I just wanted to go a little bit further and add a rust effect as well. Now, just within the last couple of weeks, I put up a video focusing specifically on how to build up a rust effect. So I'm not going to properly go through explaining it again. If you would like to check that out, make sure you go and watch that video. But basically the process is putting the typhus corrosion down first where I want the rust to be so that it starts to add some texture. Put this Vallejo rust wash over the top and then finish it off with riser rust just to really bring in that strong rust orange. And there we go, there's two different ways of making your armor pieces look as though they're damaged and tarnished. I think what I love most about these sorts of techniques is that they just add so much character to your minis as it really just helps to tell what sort of character they are and give the impression that they have been through quite a few battles. So I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed painting these armor pieces. So if you did enjoy it and you're able to take part of this away and use it in your own painting, please do consider giving the video a thumbs up as well as hitting the subscribe button to stay up to date with future videos as they keep coming out, as well as stopping by the Facebook, Twitter and Instagram accounts for this channel. But that's going to do us for today. So until next time, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers. Cheers.